Bowhead whales are massive 80-ton, 15-meter giants who can live over 200 years of age. Genetically, they're thought to be able to live to 268. It's very surprising given their massive size. So what's their secret? Scientists believe the answer lies in their extraordinary DNA repair systems that protect them from aging and disease. And now, a brand new 2025 study has found that one of these whale DNA repair proteins can actually stabilize human cells when implanted in the lab. This discovery could reshape how we think about human longevity and how we are able to extend human lifespan. So in this video, I'm going to explain what makes bowhead whales live so long and whether or not humans can mimic even a fraction of those benefits. DNA damage is thought to be one of the main drivers of aging. During aging, you accumulate unrepaired DNA damage that leads to mitochondrial dysfunction, inflammation, and mutations. Now, aging is a lot more complex than that. It's not just wear and tear that damage accumulation is causing aging. Yes, it's a big part of aging, but it's not the only reason why we age. While high levels of oxidative stress, inflammation, and DNA damage have a significant role in the aging process, they don't tell us the whole story. In fact, some degree of oxidative stress may actually be beneficial by triggering adaptive responses that enhance cellular resistance. This process is known as hormesis, and it's a biological phenomenon seen across all species. And DNA damage is an inevitable part of life. Breathing, sunlight, eating, doing anything causes a small amount of oxidative stress in the body. Over decades, this gradual accumulation of damage contributes to aging and increases the risk of cancer and other age-related diseases. Most animals prevent cancer by detecting DNA damage and killing the cell, which is a process called apoptosis, or they stop its growth by turning it senescent, a state where the cell permanently stops dividing. While senescent cells are metabolically active, they can become pro-inflammatory over time and contribute to aging if not cleared. Too much apoptosis, on the other hand, can accelerate tissue degeneration and aging as you keep killing your healthy cells. Bowhead whales don't kill these damaged cells. Instead, they repair them before mutations occur. This makes them extremely resistant to cancer and they experience slower aging because they're more resistant to DNA damage over time and they also have less accumulation of senescent cells, which are intrinsic to aging. Compared to other mammals and humans, the bowhead whale exhibits significantly higher amounts of DNA double-strand break repair. Higher amounts of DNA double-strand break repair has been seen to correlate with the species' longevity. Bowhead whales have a unique version of a protein called P53, which is called the guardian of the genome that protects against cancer. In other animals, too much P53 can damage healthy tissues, but in bowhead whales, P53 not only prevents cancer, but also prevents unnecessary apoptosis. Bowhead whales actually have much lower P53 expression than humans or mice. So the bowhead whales don't express more P53, but they're much better at regulating and balancing it. Basically, when other species evolved to select for the apoptosis and cell senescent route, then the bowhead whales evolved towards more of this efficient DNA repair, which actually turned out to be in their favor, because they live longer. In this new study that investigated these DNA repair mechanisms, the scientists put one of the key repair proteins called CIRBP into human cells. The cells started overexpressing CRBP and their DNA repair improved and had fewer mutations after DNA damage. CIRBP is short for cold-inducible RNA binding protein, which is a cold shock protein. Basically, it's a stress response protein that whales have a lot of because they live in cold waters near the Arctic Circle. Because of the cold, their body increases stress resilience and DNA repair, which appears to be the reason these animals live so long. CRBP was also seen to be responsible for stabilizing P53 as we just talked about. Bowhead whales are very good at regulating P53 and the cold shock protein is responsible for this. As a result, they have better tumor suppression and they prevent excess apoptosis. The reason why these natural selection pathways occurred is obviously not clear, but it might have to do with the environmental niche of these animals. Whales don't really have natural predators and they live in very cold temperatures where their body needs to express more cold shock proteins to survive. So their species didn't need to evolve in the direction of apoptosis and cell senescence, such as other land animals, because they could get away with focusing more on DNA repair. Land animals need to focus on short-term survival because they have a lot more predators. Okay, so does this mean that you need to start taking ice baths and cold showers to express more cold shock proteins and to live longer? Cold shock proteins are multifunctional RNA-DNA binding proteins produced by cells in response to cold stress. They help animals and humans to survive low temperatures. Lower body temperatures have often been seen to be predictors of lifespan in some species because being super warm consumes more energy. 
and greater energy consumption leads to greater generation of oxidative stress through the metabolism. And it's no surprise that one of the longest living animals on Earth are living in cold waters, such as the Greenland shark, who can also live over the age of 250. Scientists have even discovered a Greenland shark who's 400 years old. In humans, it's obviously a bit more complicated than that. Slightly lower body temperature seems to be associated with better longevity and lower heart disease risk. However, calorie restriction lowers body temperature, so it's more likely that people who eat fewer calories and stay lower body fat have lower body temperature because they eat less and they have less body fat. So it's less likely that the low body temperature specifically would make you live longer. It might be either or because there's still no well-controlled human studies on this topic yet. At the same time, low body temperature can also shorten your lifespan. If you have low body temperature, then you also are more likely to have low thyroid functioning. Thyroid hormones regulate your entire metabolism, your other hormones, so if you have low thyroid functioning, you're more likely to gain weight and become obese. It's also true that body temperature tends to decrease with age, meaning that the oldest people naturally have lower body temperatures. Not because low temperature causes longevity, but because aging impairs temperature regulation, partly through low thyroid functioning. In fact, hypothermia is a common cause of death among the elderly, who are more vulnerable to the cold and heat. So in older adults, a low body temperature often reflects frailty or declining health. And in that context, it can actually predict a shorter lifespan, not a longer one. As a last straw to this body temperature theory, women have lower body temperature than men, but women live about 5 to 10 years longer than men. What it means is that this relationship between body temperature and longevity isn't straightforward. It's more likely the case that people with lower body temperature eat less calories, they have lower body fat, and that's the reason why they live longer. Low body temperature alone might potentially be harmful, especially for the elderly people. So based on all of this information, I would say that trying to deliberately lower your body temperature might not be the best idea, or at least it's not going to be worth it. The only exception to that might be if you achieve a lower body temperature through calorie restriction or weight loss. But what about short acute cold exposure like doing an ice bath? There is evidence that short cold exposure like ice baths and cold showers lower inflammation, strengthen the immune system, increase metabolic rate, and have other benefits on the nervous system and circulatory system. A 2022 review found that cold water exposure decreases ApoB, homocysteine, oxidative stress, cortisol, insulin, and immunoglobulins, while increasing free T3, immune cells, and insulin sensitivity. Humans do have CRBP, the cold shock protein that was responsible for the DNA repair in bowhead whales. In laboratory studies, when human cells are exposed to this cold exposure, they do upregulate the expression of CRBP, as well as other cold shock proteins. But we don't know whether these practical cold exposures, like ice baths and cold showers, whether or not they increase CRBP. It's very likely that they do, but how much and is it going to be effective enough? Do you need to achieve these near hypothermic conditions to achieve a significant effect on your DNA repair and CRBP expression? Or is taking a few cold showers and turning down the central heating enough? We don't know that. All right, let me bring it all together. I think this study was very insightful and potentially useful for future gene therapies. If we would have a gene therapy for modulating our P53 or CRBP expression, we might be able to extend human lifespan without living in freezing temperatures all the time. Should you start lowering your body temperature, whether through extreme dieting, weight loss, or taking chronic ice baths? I don't think so. The relationship between chronic low temperature and human longevity is somewhat limited, in my opinion. As for short-term cold exposure, like cold showers, some ice baths, cold water swimming, etc., I do think that they might have some benefits, specifically for lowering inflammation, improving your immune system, and just increasing overall resilience. But they can also have some negative side effects. But I don't think taking ice baths is going to make you live longer, not any more than a few years, at least. Body temperature and metabolic rate are one of the biomarkers I ranked in my video. Check out a hundred other biomarkers that are ranked from the most vital to the least important. 